Welcome to another How to Code Well video tutorial. My name is Peter Fisher and today we're going to continue looking at PHP arrays and we're going to focus on the array underscore values method and how we can use that to re-index a PHP array. So let's go ahead and create an array now. So variable A, we're going to equal that to be a bunch of fruits. So apples, uh, pears, we're also going to have grapes, and we're going to have oranges too. And that is a string, so it needs to be in quotes. Like that. Okay. So let's do a raw print of variable A, and we can see that we have the array here. Now the first element has the key of zero. Um, and the last element, oranges, has the key of three. So if you haven't seen my previous video where I uh, go into a little bit more depth of, of what is an array and how to create one, then uh, I would recommend you check that out first. So, okay, we're gonna remove one of these elements now. So we're gonna remove, let's say, the grapes. So to do that, we would do unset um, the uh, value of grapes with a key of two. So we're going to remove that, and then if we did a print R again, we can see that grapes have now been removed. Now notice that the keys haven't changed, so the keys are still the same as they were before. So zero, zero is apples, one is pears, and three is oranges. We've removed the second one. So what, hap what what do we need to do in order to re-index this array? So by re-indexing, I mean changing the order back so it's incrementing. So this would be 0, this would be 1, and this would be 2 instead of 3. How do we do that? So there is a, a method in PHP called array underscore values. Now what that does is it returns the um, array values in, an, a re in a re indexed form. So just an example, let's do a print R and we're going to pass in array underscore values and in array underscore values in that method we're going to pass in variable A as its parameter. Now notice that uh, oranges is set to 3 here so I'm just going to run that on another screen and we can see that uh, we've got the array back but this time it's re-indexed so oranges as it was before was set to 3 is now set to 2. So please note that uh, running array values like this doesn't actually change the the, the, the return of, of A. It doesn't actually change its, its variable, its value. Um, and I can demonstrate that by just going back to printing R of variable A. Okay, so variable A is still set to its original, original state where oranges is set to 3. So in order to um, change variable a, we need to assign variable a to the return of array underscore values, like so. Okay, so let's just print R just to prove that that has changed. Okay, so yes, we have now changed variable a back to the return of array underscore values. So it's worth noting that uh, running array underscore values like this will also change the uh, any keys that have strings. So by that I mean, for example, we could have, uh, let's just clear that screen down, we could have variable A with a key of test, for example, so that will be a string, and we're going to equal that to be grapes, like so. Now let's just do a print R to see what we've got. Um, variable A, there we go. So we have these these elements here, so apples, pears, oranges, and grapes again. But in this case, we have 0, 1, 2, and then test. Now if I was to go back a couple of bits, so we get the the, the, the raw representation of the re-indexed array value of A, um, we will notice that test gets changed to to become a numerical key. Now that numerical key will be based on its position. So let's run that and we can see that it's set to three because it's the third one in the, in the, in line. So again, we would need to run uh, a is equal to array values in order to assign a to this new return. So if I just did a print R of a, we can see um, that it's back 
to a, a numerical key. Okay, so that's running array underscore values. Thank you for watching. Please click the like button if you found it useful and make sure to subscribe to get the next tutorial. If you have any comments, questions or queries, then please leave them in the comments section below. Alternatively, you can tweet them to my Twitter handle, which is PFWD. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.